prostitution in medieval England was not necessarily a woman's sole career choice. And there are many examples of women who used prostitution to supplement their everyday income. A lack of centralised law across England provides a consistently different attitude towards the prostitute across the country. An attitude which was already significantly different to that on the continent. As a general rule, Europe seemed to be far more lenient and accepting of the occupation as a necessary public utility and, although many countries engaged a policy of restriction, it was aimed against the clientele of the prostitutes and not the prostitutes themselves. In particular, married men, clergy and Jews were forbidden to patronise them and faced heavy fines if caught doing so while the admitting brothel faced no repercussions for allowing them entry. In early medieval France, prostitutes faced public humiliation in an attempt to repress the trade. However, in later centuries there developed a clear recognition that men, especially those of who were unmarried, had needs. In recognising these needs, the authorities also saw how money could be made from providing them with the necessary services, and so public brothels managed by town officials came into being. Providing they paid a weekly sum to the authority, these women were allowed to ply their trade without interfering or harassment. The rest of Europe was largely tolerant of sex workers, the rationale being that allowing brothels to operate accorded the authorities some level of control over the industry created specific areas where men could go to indulge discreetly and protected innocent women and limited the disruption caused by prostitutes who advertised themselves in the street. The idea of publicly operated brothels never caught on in England, which maintained a negative attitude towards the occupation and punished anyone involved, the women themselves, those who allowed it to operate and the clients. England had more prosecutions for prostitution than any other European country, even more than certain areas of Italy which had outright banned the trade. The medieval prostitutes almost never undertook her occupation to set her uncontrollable lust. The motivation was almost always financial. While there were a number of full-time prostitutes, there were also women who simply used it as a means to bolster their primary source of income during particularly hard times. You can imagine a conversation, can't you? Alf, there's no in the pantry for supper. Oh dear lass, well never mind. We'll just have to tighten our belts and just go hungry tonight. Bugger that, I'm not tightening no belt and I'm not going hungry. I'm going to nip down, stand outside Dog and Duck, see if I can earn a sticky shilling. I'll get us a pie on way home. Ah, that sounds like a good idea, lass. Well done. More disturbingly, however, there were women who were sold by the family members in order to generate funds for the family. As there was no strict definition of what constituted a prostitute, there was also a lack of consistency in the legal treatment of them. While in London, the area of skewside was unofficially designated the medieval equivalent of the red light district. In Coventry, any single woman renting a room for herself could be arrested under suspicion of prostitution, which prompted the authorities to outright ban single women from renting rooms. Well, madam, this is the room, one of our best, as you can see. A fresh straw palace on the floor, a three-legged stool, a wooden table and a jug of water. Well, your advertisement did say that the room was en suite. Ah, it is, lass. There's a bucket in corner. When you're done, you just empty it out a window. When will your husband be joining you? Uh, I don't have a husband. I'm not married. You what? Oh, no, I, I want to rent the room. I've got business in the town. Aye, ah, I bet you bloody have. I bet the business in, in, includes bringing a non-stop trail of sailors up and down my stairs. Well, swing you up, darling. You don't have no single women in this place. Off it. In towns where prostitution was rife but uncontrolled, any woman wandering the streets after dark was presumed to be available for sale, and cases of mistaken identity resulting in violence were common. 
As such, numerous towns and cities demanded that prostitutes dress themselves in specific clothes to distinguish themselves from the general populace, with most requiring the ladies to don a straight hood. Particularly successful whores found themselves prosecuted for breaching sumptuary laws, laws which restricted the clothing, colour, material that certain classes could wear, rather than the act which earned them the money for the finery in the first place. The punishment of prostitutes across England reveals a lack of concerted effort to deal with the problem, a more series of superficial measures meant to act as mild deterrents rather than to eradicate prostitution completely. In Southampton, a number of women pulled their resources and all moved to the same street to rent rooms where they could sell themselves. They seem to have operated there for a number of years before the local religious community made a particularly loud complaint forcing the authorities to move the women on. But they faced no actual punishment. The most common sanction found in the town ordinances across England involved the town bailiff removing the doors and or windows of the women's room, rendering it uninhabitable and certainly an unattractive place for a potential rendezvous. Later, this would be replaced by more obvious methods of public humiliation, where the women were taken outside of the city walls and expelled. Pimps or brothel owners also faced public humiliation, but were also at risk of the more severe punishments of fines and prison sentences. During the later medieval period, the Christian notion of the reformed prostitute took hold. Fueled by the cults of St Mary of Egypt and Mary Magdalene, and public opinion softened towards whores. Instead of being women to be reviled, these women were now the subject of charity and public funds were set up to assist women trying to escape a life of sex work. Despite this, in many areas women known to sell their bodies were not allowed membership of the local church until they had set aside their life of sin. Though we should also point out that there are numerous records of churchmen being caught with prostitutes. The punishment for which was severe for the churchmen. All in all, the attitude towards prostitution was entirely contradictory. On one hand, they were a necessary utility required and approved of to provide a service for unmarried men, while on the other, they were peddlers of sin, needing to be expelled from the city lest they sully the reputation of a town by their deeds. Better indeed to have been a prostitute in Europe and enjoy an interference-free, entirely legal life, albeit at a price.